Ela, hello, welcome to uh, WordCamp Portal. She's the um, head of growth of Maximer AS. It's a Norwegian uh, company. Mila was born in Croatia, but with four years old, she moved to Norway with the parents. She is a marketing professional in, and is the head of growth of Maximer, where, is, where she specializes in digital marketing and e-commerce with a focus on WordPress and WooCommerce. So Mila is also a gym fanatic and uh, she uh, is uh, usual uh, indoor climbing so let's move mountains uh, she's first timer in portugal welcome thank you and also of course first time in the portal So in the next few minutes, we'll find out about SEO 2.0, a guide for e-commerce success with Google search generative experience and AI-driven SEO strategies. Ellen, your stage. Thank you. All right. Hello, this is my first time at WordCamp, so please be, be nice to me. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be talking about SEO. There is a lot of changes happening happening this year uh, with basically what they call the AR, AI revolution in, uh, in the SEO world. Um, so our agenda for today is what is SEO? Uh, surprisingly, a lot of developers that I ask if they actually know what SEO is, they tell me no, uh, which is, uh, yeah, it, developers should generally know what SEO is because it's so important to the post-launch process because that's what actually makes the money in the aftermath. Um, and we are going to be looking at these changes, um, mainly SGE, or as Google now calls it since two days ago, uh, AI overview. And we are going to be looking at how people can adjust their strategies to keep up with these changes. And we'll take it step by step so we can go through all of the uh, things that we need to adjust. And then the Q&A is at the end. All right. So... Does everyone know exactly what SEO here, here is? Everyone good with it? Yeah, good. Um, so basically, it's all the traffic that we don't pay for. And people generally have a lot more trust in this type of traffic than the pay traffic. Uh, the pay traffic means you just have money. The um, organic traffic means that you actually know your stuff enough to be uh, an authority in the field. So how do you work with it? It's very easy. You create good content and you answer the questions that your customers are asking. Um, and you basically make the website something that they want. So you need to know your target group in order to be able to work with this. Um, you make it easy for Google to understand your website. A lot of this is where you developers uh, come in. Um, and then you have to maintain your website continuously. So you can't just do your optimization once and then be done with it and expect it to sort of live its own life without you uh, making any actions in the aftermath. So what is changing? Um, basically, as you all know, um, AI has completely changed the way we talk to our laptops. Um, our questions are completely different. They're much longer. We expect longer answers. Uh, we expect them right away. We don't want to look for them. Um, and this is the result of what has become, in my life, it's basically like my personal assistant, ChatGPT. Everything I wonder about, I ask ChatGPT. Um, and Google's response to this was initially barred, which basically failed before it even launched. Um, they had a very bad kickoff with the demo where it answered all of the questions wrong. Um, so they moved on to Gemini, which, um, was also a little bit questionable with some of the images it generated, uh, in terms of, yeah, some, yeah, uh, we don't, we don't have to talk about it. Um, and then they moved on to search generative experience, which is now AI overview. Um, so SGE, what is it? What is the change? 
It's basically ChatGPT, but with the actual current information that Google has with all of the products, all of the images, the videos, the information, everything that Google has, you will have access to in just this little featured window here. Uh, you will be able to get all the answers to your questions and you will know who the authorities are for these answers. Um, and it actually just recently uh, launched testing in the USA, so hopefully it'll be rolled out uh, worldwide in a, in a very short time. All right, so the difference, as you can see, uh, in the old search engine or the one that we have today, we have to make a lot more effort to find the answers that we're looking for. Uh, whereas in the new one, everything is basically set in the first fold or the first window that you see uh, in the result. So how does it differ? So the, the search is a lot more advanced. We sort of have more elements to the way that we search. It becomes more specific. Um, we get an answer to what is important when we are purchasing the, uh, the product. So if I don't know anything about cameras, I will learn what I need to look for in a camera here. Um, and here is sort of where the optimization comes in. We have to be an authority in order to be visible at all. Most people are most likely not going to go uh, further than this. And there is a lot of elements to be able to sort of reach these a uh, few results that define the answer to the first question that you're sort of asking, where is this camera that I'm looking for? Um, shopping results, you can see the product information is a lot more than what we used to have. You used to have the title, maybe a few reviews and the price. Now you have the description, you have the uh, reviews, you have the price, title, you have what it's good for. So if you can see there, it says good for skateboarding, good for cycling. So it's sort of a lot smarter um, than it used to be. Um, what does it mean in practice? It means that Google is shifting their focus to quality um, and they are looking for pages that are very relevant to what you're searching for in that specific search that you're doing and they're looking for pages that are readable and easy to use. So what do you have to do? You have to have structured data so that Google can actually read your site. Um, your content has to be of a certain quality so that you can sort of respond to the questions that your customers are asking and become an authority in your industry. So never guess, sort of, you have to look at what they're asking and answer those questions. Um, and your product information is going to become very important. So you can't just sort of export it from your ERP and be done with it. You have to enrich it. You have to make it better. You have to make it relevant and readable for the people that are coming to the site. All right. So um, how do we do it? This sort of applies to both how the search engine is today, but it's going to apply in a bigger degree to how it's going to be in a short time. Step by step, um, so basically step one, we start with the basics, which is technical SEO. You have to maintain a technically good site in order to have it be sort of user-friendly, uh, past, good. Uh, and then you go on to indexing so that Google can actually see your site. Um, you fix the content that you already have on your site. And then you continue writing more valuable content so that you can answer all the questions that your uh, customers are asking. And then last step, schema, so that the search engine can understand what you're writing about and understa understand what industry you're in and basically what your products are. All right, so uh, technical SEO. There are obviously more uh, advanced tools than SEMrush, but I think SEMrush is the easiest tool to use in this case because it tells you what the issue is, uh, how you can fix it, and points you to sort of a developer if you need a developer to fix it. Um, and this is the, the foundation of SEO, even though it's generally very undervalued. Uh, so if you don't keep a technically good site, then your basically your search uh, engine optimization efforts won't reach their full, full potential. So if you write a crazy good article and 
you don't maintain a good site, it's going to uh, not reach the potential that it should reach. And it's not a one-time job, so you have to keep doing it. If you fix all your errors, the next day there's going to be more. Uh, so you have to keep fixing it all the time. Um, and the point of this is to make it search engine friendly. Uh, you make it easier for the search engine to crawl your site, index it, understand it, um, and it makes it more usable in general. Uh, it can make it faster, make it more secure, um, usability, UX, everything is sort of included in the whole technical foundation of, uh, of your site. Step two, indexing. Uh, obviously, this is very important because if you're not indexed, you're not visible in Google. Uh, so yeah, um, your, your work would go to waste. Why is it important for SG? Because without it, you're not visible at all. And then step three is fixing, actually focusing on the content that is already on the page and the structures that are already on the page before you move on to working on the rest. Um, so you have to show off your expertise, uh, you have to be an authority, and you have to be uh, trustworthy. So uh, there is obviously the factor of good content, but then there is also the factor of a good, main well-maintained site uh, that comes into trustworthiness as well. Um, so you shouldn't spend your indexing budget on empty pages. If you have empty pages, they're of no value to, to Google or to your users. Uh, there is nothing to see there. So yeah, you should fill them with something good. All right. So when you're working on fixing your sites, you should look at the sites that have the most value in terms of, for example, we work with e-commerce sites. So I'm looking at the sites that sell the most. So where do the customers go most? They go to project product pages because um, those show up in both organic and I pay a lot of money for them to be visible in shopping. And actually, if your SEO and technical uh, side is, is uh, good on your site, then your shopping uh, ads will become cheaper and all other ads will sort of become cheaper because Google trusts your pages more. Uh, and then I look at the category pages and uh, the about us pages because customers will be looking at this information as well. And then I look at the brand pages. So it could either be branding pages for the particular site that I'm working for, or it could be pages that uh, are for the brands that they are working for. Um, so what can you do here with AI? You could use Gemini or ChatGPT. Uh, do not use it for articles or blogs because they sort of just spit out information without knowing if it's really correct or not. Um, and also it's never your final cut. So your uh, results that you get from Gemini or ChatGPT is your first draft and you have to fix it. Um, so ChatGPT is very good for processing large amounts of information. I've tested it with descriptions for, for example, 100 products that are exported directly from the ERP with just the basic information about the product and asked it to focus on keywords that are in the um, that are in the information and to make it sort of optimized to that based on what their customers are searching for. And it did actually create some decent descriptions. They weren't perfect, but um, maybe two hours of editing, I had all the information that I needed to post it on the site. Gemini was not very good at sort of the large amount of information, but it was a lot better on creating one product description. It needed a lot less editing than the ChatGPT version, and it was a lot more correct. Um, so if you're looking for quality and you have maybe four products on your page, then Gemini is better. If you're looking for uh, quantity, then go for ChatGPT because it could sort of understand larger amounts of information easier. Um, so how did it work in practice? This is the information that we could extract. Um, and you basically just <clears throat> ask it to create an SEO optimized version of the, of the description based on the information that you have here. And it gives you quite a bit of text. Um, it's actually decent quality, but you do have to make it a little bit shorter because people are not going to take the time to read uh, very long descriptions. Uh, we have 
about eight seconds of customer time um, and then they're going to leave. So make it shorter, make it very comprehensible, say as much as you can in, in as few words as possible, but you can use this. This is uh, actually a quite good result. And then you are creating new content. There's quite a few tools here that are very good for both understanding your target groups and monitoring your competition. So you can see, for example, here in the, in the second box here, you can see exactly what your competitors are doing, what changes they're making to their sites, what posts are they posting, where are they most active, uh, basically anything that they're doing, you can see. Um, and this is the ION tool that is in SEMrush as well. And then on the first one where you can see Market Explorer, you can learn both what your audience is, where they're from, uh, how old they are, what they work with, what their income is, uh, basically how many children they have, what the last thing they clicked on was. And what is very important here is what types of sites are they visit visiting? Um, so this shows you what kind of functionalities they're interested in, what works best for them, what, why are they visiting these sites so many times. It's obviously because this is something that's interesting to them and that works for them in terms of usability and uh, how easy it is for them to understand. Yes, your data should be data driven. Uh, uh, your information should be data driven. Do not guess. There are answers to what your customers are looking for. If you guess, most of your work is going to be wasted. Uh, so you need to have some sort of uh, information to support your work. Um, SEMrush is good for this. They actually have a lot of new AI features in beta testing, and they are very interesting because they can help you, based on five keywords, make huge clusters of articles um, and basically give you a lot of information based on just a little bit of research. So it's going to make uh, my life a lot easier and probably a lot of people's lives a lot easier in terms of research. All right. Um, yeah, when you've actually created the content, keep an eye on it. Don't just leave it. Use SEMrush. Um, make sure that you adjust along the way if it's not ranking, if it's not working, if customers are just leaving the site, you need to adjust and be patient. This is not uh, a short game. It's a very sort of patient man's game. Um, and use AI tools, but don't use them as your final cut because they're not going to be good enough and Google is going to recognize that you're using AI. And last but not least, schema is going to be very, very important going forward because this is sort of what your uh, search engine sees, what your search engine understands, and they understand what you are working with. Um, so it's basically code that tells the uh, code or markup that tells the search and the engines what is on your site, what is in your content, what your products are, and all of that. Um, so a question we get is, should I use Tag Manager? Should I put it in code? Should I use a plugin? Um, Tag Manager doesn't really have the best reputation here. We have tested it quite a few times. It's worked OK. Um, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we get good results. Sometimes we don't. Website code, it's, uh, yeah, uh, it takes a little bit of time. But what we really love is this. AI tool uh, called WordLift, and it does it for you. Uh, it basically implements the schema on the page and makes it easier for you to uh, do this without a lot of effort. It recognizes the pages and it can implement the schema without you having to uh, do too much. And then Google can recognize, for example, what category you're in of products based on their categories. Um, and this is just a general example from Bose, but you can see the difference in the information that the search engine gets. There's a lot more information with schema uh, than there is without. The information without is very basic. Um, so here, the customer can see your ratings, it can see the price, and it can see whether the product is in stock. So they're more likely to click with all of this information rather than just uh, nothing. So to recap, uh, maintain your site, technically. Uh, don't just leave it once you've done it once. Indexing, if you don't make sure that your site is indexed, it's not going to be visible at all. 
fix your content. So make sure that it's valuable, make sure that it's uh, filled with something that answers your customers' questions. And then you write valuable content. Don't do it on your own and don't do it sort of based on your own thoughts, but do some research, understand your customers, understand your competitors and base it on that. And then schema so that your that the search engine understands your website um, and can actually see the value you're sort of giving your industry. And so that you can come on top here and be someone that people actually click on and be an authority. Yep, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mila. Thank you. So now we have some minutes for questions and answers. A question here from uh, Samuel, here, in the second line. Hi, Mila, thank you. Uh, thank good you. presentation, great one. Yes. Uh, I, do, I do have one specific question about um, schema. I implemented mm -hmm. like a couple of times and right when you start your presentation, I was like, okay, I will have questions about schema. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a specialist uh, at all. Um, it's it's in fact it's it's really important for SEO. My question is, um, it will be or there already we already have um, specific tags for this new way of searching, or we are just using the classic ones. Are you, should we expect new ones? What do you think about it? Or? There, it should be pretty. It should be pretty classic, like the the same structure that was before. It should continue going. Um, I haven't seen any updates about there being any new sort of way of um, completing it. But if you're looking for sort of keeping updated in this and getting new information, there's this schema.org site, which generally keeps you updated um, on if there's any changes. But for now, like the um, a product title is a product title, a product uh, description is a product description. So um, I don't see a lot of changes coming in this particular area. Uh, so it should be the same. And then if you use plugins and AI, it will cover you uh, with an update. So yeah, it should be, uh, you should be good with the classic version of it. Thank you. Yeah. We have another question here. Yeah. Uh, very good talk, Mila. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, I have a quick question about the Wordlist uh, plugin that you mentioned. Is it compatible with the uh, SEO plugins, Radma, Joas, and what it uh, what add port to the content in that case? In that structure, Joas, or what else in the Wordlist plugin? Sorry, if they just do the schema or if yes, they do other just the schema or do uh, other stuff ab 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 uh, beside the schema. So we've only used it for the schema functionality. We usually use Rank Math or Yoast for um, anything else, although it doesn't it doesn't really give a lot of SEO value uh, in in terms of like I know a lot of people uh, follow the smiley faces, um, which is is good to have when you're starting out. But in terms of like actually doing the work, it's uh, it's not gonna help you that much. But with WordLift, we have uh, We've used it for, for schema, mainly. Yeah. Thanks. I think we have uh, one minute for one more question. Uh, yeah, we have, we have, we have it here. The last question for me. My presentation. So you mentioned crawl budget, indexing budget. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, so um, basically Google has a limited amount of pages that it's going to crawl for you. Um, and this budget is determined on a lot of factors, but you can actually see it in your uh, search console. Uh, it gives you sort of the average number of sites that the crawl bots are going to be going through in your, uh, in your pages. So if you have a lot of empty pages with a lot of useless content, then you are spending your crawl budget on these empty pages and Google might not see the pages that you've actually put effort into if you don't manually input them in and ask Google to crawl them. So this is sort of what your crawl budget is about and this is why I'm saying don't have empty pages, fill them with good content with value. Otherwise you're sort of wasting your effort and resources on, uh, on this. 
Uh, finish, almost finished because we have uh, still time for one question from you. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, great Hi. talk, by the way. Thank you. Um, I've seen a screenshot of how I've seen a screenshot of how Google search, like the landing page after we type yeah. the query, uh, has changed over the years. Yeah. And it's uh, way more focused on them presenting the conf uh, content, the answers, before even getting to the sites where they got the information from. And AI is really helping them to just keep visitors there. Yeah. Is there a differentiator, if you had a chance to, to see already, uh, for e-commerce sites or for uh, non-e-commerce sites? Yeah, so what the difference is going to be for e-commerce sites? Um, so most of the difference for e-commerce sites in terms of the actual result is going to be in showcasing the product. Uh, so you're going to have to have a lot more valuable information uh, for for the actual product to be able to be shown in the in the main fold. So basically the question is going to be answered by your products because all of the information is going to be so readable. And this depends on you having uh, good information, good schema, uh, and basically keeping a good technically uh, maintained site. So this is going to be the, the main change. Your products are going to be featured in the e-commerce side. And it's also going to be good for the clean content sites because you have the snippet that is determined by sort of the first 10 uh, pages and they are going to be visible as you saw just in the uh, in the side. So you can go to the go to the pages if you want more information. So it's going to be better in that in that way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.